Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Oh my goodness. Okay, give it here. First off, let me grab her toy. Yeah, this is for you. This is for you. Okay. You're like, this one's way better. <laughs> and this is for me. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this in there. Oh. And then I'm closing the door. So now you gotta go play with that toy, crazy lady. What you doing? Oh my goodness. Oh no. Not for you. Come on. Here, this is for you. And this. Good girl. Hello. What did you do in here? Yeah. Hi. Hi. You tore up my book. At least you grabbed all the rugs out of the bathroom. Yeah, you sweet girl. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle. And this is Abby. Say hello. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about chewing. So Abby is four months old and she is teething. So she has been very explorative with her mouth, as you could have seen in the last few clips. So there are a few things that you can do while I'm doing to try to curve this, at least, you know, manage the behavior um, while she goes through this teething process. So in the clips, you're going to see me while well, you saw you saw me kind of just take away what she was chewing and give her something appropriate to chew. So that's the first step. The second step that I'm using is trying to teach her to like ignore things that I don't want her to chew on. So it's an active training part. Um, the next clip is um, I have my favorite house slippers, which are her favorite house slippers to chew up. And I'm going to start, you know, having it around her and saying yes and treating her when she walks past it and ignore it. And that's what I'm going to do in the next few clips. Enjoy. Okay, so now that I have reset the room to the proper configuration, meaning all the trash is gone, I have some treats. I have my shoe that she loves. This one. And we're going to do some training to see maybe I can uh, get her not to chase or eat the shoe. So. So I'm gonna to try to explain what I'm doing here yes. as I'm doing it. Good. Basically, I'm just walking past the shoe. Yes. If she chooses Good. to ignore it and kind of focus on me, she gets the yes and the reward. Mm -hmm. Ignore me picking up the creature, Good. the toy Good. with my toe like a monkey. So yes. Good girl. now Good. I'm adding other toys. Yes. So she's allowed to interact with the other toys but she's not allowed to interact with the shoe. So basically, I'm trying to teach her to avoid uh, avoid the shoe. Basically, the shoe is not important. You see how I threw the, the toy and she went and got it, but she still ignored the shoe? That's what I want, so that's what I'm marking. So oops is her, um, basically, you did the wrong thing cue. Whenever I say oops, yes. she knows that was the incorrect choice. So I removed the shoe and then I set her up for success. Good. Oops. Yes. Good. Good. 
Yes. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Sit. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Get it. So as you could see, as the training session went on, I kind of like up to the, um, the difficulty. So at first the shoe was just on the ground and she just had to walk by it to um, earn the reward. As the training session went on, I started to pick the shoe up and toss it. Moving items are way more interesting to dogs. So for her to be able to ignore the shoe when it's moving and just focus on me that was a win very good win so that's what i did and um we're just going to continue to work on this um there are a couple other shoes so in this next series clip series you're going to see there are going to be a quite a few other shoes in on the floor and only when she interacts with a toy not the shoes is she going to get rewarded so let's see how that goes Okay, so now we have two shoes on the ground and I'm gonna get another pair of shoes that she loves to chew up. My slippers. Once again, treats. And the rules are for this time is she can interact with anything on the ground except for any of the shoes. So we have a couple toys there and now two sets of shoes. Oops, yes. Okay, so it was a little bit difficult at first. So what I'm doing now is just I'm walking her past the shoes. And if she's ignoring them, then she gets her treat. But um, I'm gonna ignore her for a few minutes and see what she does. So she grabbed one of my shoes, I just removed it, gave her her wrong answer cue, and I'm going to try again, walk past another one. So she was barking at me, demand barking, and I just ignored her. Yes! Good girl. So she started to interact with her toy and not the shoe. I marked that. Good girl. And I'm gonna quit while we're ahead. She did pretty good. So the point of that was to 
just have the shoes in the area with her toys and reward her for ignoring the shoes and uh, playing with her or choosing to interact with the toys that are appropriate for her. So that is basically how I am trying to train her to not chew up my shoes all the time and to actually work with her own toys. Yeah. Hey, baby girl. Mm -hmm. Good girl. Always quit while you're ahead. Um, yeah, quit while you're ahead. She had a couple successes there at the end, and this is where I'm stopping. So in addition to that training, right, you can um, basically train them to leave that stuff alone. That's what I'm doing while well, you just saw. I'm trying to train her. Um, you can replace when they do get the the thing that they're not supposed to be chewing on in their mouth. You replace it with uh, something that is appropriate. I'm watching her because she's... Uh, walking around the shoes like she wants to bite one anyways so replace it with something that is appropriate to chew on when they do get it in their mouths and lastly the most important thing i'm trying to curve her from this destructive behavior with shoes and things that she's not supposed to chew on is management puppies don't know your language they don't speak english <laughs> they don't know what's appropriate to chew on what's not appropriate to chew on so you have to teach them and one thing you can do to make the process go by more smoothly is to minimize the amount of opportunities they have to get into the wrong thing. So have a safe area without any things that they can get into, which I had been feeling at miserably. I thought I puppy proof this room, but as you can see, I have some books in there and I didn't know she found it because it's at her level. You really have to take your <laughs> per point of view from the up here in the human world to the dog world. Otherwise, it's quite easy to miss things that they can get into. Um, so the tips are, <coughs> yes, what you barking at, Papa? Tips are replacing things when they find something to chew on that they're not supposed to have with something they are supposed to chew on. Actually training them to kind of ignore those um, items that they're not supposed to chew and managing the behavior, making sure those items that are destroyable are out of sight, they can't reach them. And yeah, that's the three ways I'm doing it. There also are like taste sprays that taste bad so that the dogs don't chew on things. I don't wanna spray all my things with like sour apple bitter spray. So that's not the route that I'm taking, but that is another option if you just have like a dog that's chewing on the table feet and you think it's just so it'd be easier to manage it that way but i hope you enjoyed this video this is what i'm doing to help her to stop chewing on my shoes and yeah enjoy and i'll see you next time bye